Welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42, and I thought I'd take this time to kind of show you a little bit about Colossal. Now, I've already done the reviews for the base game and its expansion, the Roomlands, but I kind of want to show you how it plays out. I mean, it's a journaling game. It's very unique and something that I've really not done before. And so I wanted to show you my character, Raph, and kind of give a little bit about where he's been and also kind of play a round. So over here on my left, I actually have the journal that I keep tabs for Raph in. And actually, let's take a look at his little character sheet. It's nothing outstanding. I'm, I'm not an artist by any means, so there's no pictures or anything. But uh, his name is Raf. He is of the armed class. And so that means he actually has an extra arm attached to his back. It's like a mechanical arm. And his very first, or rather his first set of equipment was a two or like a two handed war hammer. And he's also got a shield, which uh, the, arm, the extra arm on his back actually uh, holds that shield. Um, doesn't really have any mechanical purposes, it's just for, you know, narrative the narrative basically and so um his nature he is brave he's also serious and he rarely ever talks so he's kind of like the you know silent protagonist in some ways although he hasn't really met a whole lot of people in his journey so far and being of the armed his uh, his exploration score is three and his combat score is starting off at four although in the uh, one of my previous journal entries we've bumped that up to five i believe don't know what spirit score is, haven't read anything about that, so it must be a Patreon thing or something in the future kind of a thing. So all the way up at the front is where the journal entries are at. I actually don't really like the fact that the actual character sheets are in the back of the book. I would have really preferred those to be more at the front, but oh well. Raph's journey begins in his small village. And it was attacked by the Dark Army. And there's actually a prompt for this in the book um, under character creation. So I kind of went with that a little bit. And his sister was taken by the Dark Army as well as some of the other younger villagers, villagers that he's uh, become friends with. And so his main task is to rescue, to find the Dark Army and rescue his sister at all costs. Um, during that seat or that destruction of his village, uh, he actually woke up afterwards and he managed to get one of the warhammers from one of the soldiers who perished and uh, one of the rook's arms so that is why he is the of the armed class so in a standard game of colossal you draw cards and what you draw you actually follow the prompts for in the book and so my very first journal entry, you can see I've kind of already written out. I had a massive rook on my very first one, uh, something for my calling, and then someone needs you to find something, which happened to be knowledge. And so you take those things, you mix them up, and then you start writing a, pr or a journal entry based on that. I also write down my combat just in case. Uh, I actually managed to crit the massive rook like Three times would have been four, but combat ended at three. And then I have a little map down here that shows, you know, where his destroyed village is, where Ellsgate is, which is the little village that he uh, went to and got his uh, arm attached, and then where that massive rook was in the forest. And so I've had a several journal entries from the previous week, and so we're actually going to start something new here. So I have my deck of cards. Uh, this is not the full deck. I actually have about half of it remaining. I've actually played through this half or drawn that half in my journal entries. And I will not be flipping back to the pages um, for my character. Instead, I wrote them out on note cards here. Um, some friends and his scores and things like that. And so just to kind of keep it from having to flip back and forth. So, my combat, or sorry, my exploration score is three, so that means I get to draw three cards. And let's see, we have non-human camp, uh, more about our calling, and then a massive 
skeleton. That is interesting. I didn't think that would be something that we could uh, come across. But, so let me put this deck of cards away and we'll get our book out. So there's a nice section for exploration and all the prompts that you need are actually in there, as you've seen in my review of the book. Um, red cards are organic things, peoples and creatures, while black cards are scenic things, structures and objects. And so we have heart 10, diamond 3, heart 9. So let's go with the, well, let's start with the non-human camp. So 10. It's a camp of people. At least they look like people. They walk on two legs and carry tools in two arms, but they're not human. Who are they? What do they want? Uh, they don't notice you. So I've actually had this prompt, or not this specific prompt. I've actually been captured and taken prisoner by these people. So we could clearly kind of draw those connections. We're actually in a room within the Colossal that is all mountains. And so uh, there were some ancient ruins. And we actually, as soon as we came through the door, we were kidnapped by this non these non-humans. I call them goblins. So... Um, we can definitely make those connections. So what about our calling? Diamond 3. You come across someone who is key to your calling. Maybe they have a clue about what you're looking for, or they block your way to learning more. It's a diamond, so they are not friendly. So we'll have to sort of persuade them to giving information about maybe where the dark army has gone or something along that those lines. And who knows, maybe the non-human camp can ha has some information, so they would be, well, they wouldn't be friendly, but then again, they also don't notice us. And then we have Nine Heart. So, a massive skeleton. It looks humanoid, but it can't be, can it? And it is safe. There's no bandit camp there. So, that could just be a scenic piece for us. Maybe the non-human camp is actually inside of the massive skeleton. Or maybe the person who has is going to guide us on our quest is camped out there. Um, that's something that we can actually try to figure out. So we're still in the mountain room. And so what I will do next is actually fill in some of this stuff. I will fill in the cards that I've drawn in the exploration phase here. Um, I will decide if I want to engage the non-human camp because we can be sneaky about it. We don't have to encounter them because they haven't noticed us. And see what how we can tie all three of these cards in, because this is a very interesting bunch. Right now, my thinking is to put the non-human camp uh, maybe either with the massive skeleton or with the calling. Um, who knows? Maybe they have the calling person a prisoner inside of the massive skeleton. I think that could be interesting. So it's really nice to see how some how we can make some of these pieces fit. And so I'm gonna figure that out. And usually what I do is I actually take some time to think about it and process. So usually I have a day where I draw the cards and then I take a day to mull it over and think about it. And then the next day I'll start writing. And, and um, basically it's things that I've come up with over my day of thinking. So I will check back with you and once I've actually written some stuff out and filled in some of the journals, I will uh, tell you what I've come up with. So I've been thinking a couple of days about how I wanted to go about writing this journal entry because this was a really weird one for me, but I guess this is like a really nice step in actually story writing or just going about this game in general. So I'm at a non-human camp, which is tied to my calling, which is in a massive skeleton. And so what I've decided was to draw in the dark army in some way. And at first I was going to have maybe a knight from the dark army to do battle with. And then that just didn't really seem that exciting. Like one person being left behind to deal with the non-human camp didn't really sit well with me. And so I decided that I was going to have a rook that was left behind by the Dark Army to deal with this non-human camp in some way. And then my character would 
basically follow the trail of the Dark Army that way, and that would tie into the calling. So the camp would be in the massive skeleton, and we'd have to deal with the rook. And so what we're going to do here is actually create the rook. So once you've decided that you're going to fight a rook, you're going to draw a card and decide uh, what its magic type is, if any. So let's go ahead and draw our first card to decide what its magic type is going to be. Uh, we have a jo uh, jack, so this is going to be a spade, so it doesn't use any magic in its attacks, but it is going to be more defense oriented. So this rook is more defensive, maybe it huddles tight with its thick stone hide, or blocks attacks with a huge shield. And we can definitely use a new shield since I lost one of my shields in one of my previous posts. Um, but that's all just for narrative sake. So we can go ahead and fill in. So the magic type, I believe, is a spade. And body type is nine. So we got none for magic. Body is defense. So we can say that it, well, actually, what kind of a, well, let's figure out what our reward is going to be and what weapon type that we have. So for weapon type, we'll draw another card. We have a king of hearts. So the king would be melee. If hearts would be, uh, a rook lane would be our reward. So we can sell that if we make it into a capable city. So we've got that taken care of. So all that's really left to do is to actually fight this thing. And so uh, its combat score is going to be a three because we're going to fight a medium rook this time around uh, as opposed to a massive and the, uh, the I'm just basing that off of because I want to do a medium rook and not a massive rook. I've already fought a massive rook once uh, in my journal so far. And I think it would make more sense to have a medium rook being left behind to deal with the non-human camp. So what we're going to do, we're going to take Raf here. And so he's got a combat score of four. And we're going to go ahead and draw one, two, three, four cards for us. And this is going to be our hand. So we have a ten of uh, spades, eight, jack, and a six. So those are, those are okay. But we're only drawing three for the rook. So maybe we'll actually stand a chance. So first thing that we're going to do. Let's get this book out of the way. We're actually going to draw a card and then we're going to allocate one of our cards to combating that. So the card that we've drawn for the medium rook is a seven. And actually this is pretty good for us because we have an eight of clubs that we can use. And when the suits match, that is a critical hit. And I do like to write my combat stuff right here um, below the actual rook stuff. So whenever you do a critical hit on an enemy, you effectively uh, deal one less card for their combat. So instead of having a combat score of three for the medium rook, it's got a combat score of two. So I'm pretty sure we can actually uh, beat this thing. The next one is a two of diamonds. Ooh, okay, so um, I guess what we'll do is put the six of diamonds and we'll crit it again. And that's really it for this combat. Um, the rook is going to be defeated by some very hefty blows from Raph, and that is just it. So we'll put these cards in the discard pile, and then I will start thinking about how I'm going to write this. A valley lay sprawled before me. Mountains rose on all sides, partially blocking the sun. I was surprised that the green men did not pursue. I recall stories from old Uncle Joe of creatures that were green. 
He called them goblins. Could those green men be the same? I traversed the valley until about midday, or at least I think it was midday. A most curious sight blocked the path forward. It was a skeleton of a giant. It looked to have been preserved for such a time that I could not comprehend. It was the noise that alerted me. After being ambushed by the goblins, I dare not let my guard down. The commotion came from inside the skeleton. A village was nestled between the bones of the giant, but it was not of any human make. It was inhabited by the goblins. An even greater surprise to find one of the dark army's rooks wrecking havoc and destruction in its wake. I could not simply stand by and let such an evil force terrorize the innocent. I charged in and, with my warhammer, dealt it a mighty blow. With its attention turned towards me, the goblins were able to get away, and, or so I thought, this is their home. They have every right to defend themselves, and so they did. They hurled anything and everything they could to best this machine. They distracted it long enough for me to find a way past its defenses and deal the final blow. Its shield will make a fine replacement to the one I lost upon entering this room. In the aftermath, it was just me and the goblins. I have no quarrel with them, and they have none with me. We parted. It was probably for the best. The Dark Army has left tracks so that I may follow them.